Greetings, everybody. What's going on? All right, let me tell you what's going on here. Isn't that a nice, funny picture? I am uh, making a video to show how I'm uh, how I'm processing the turnips that I uh, harvested from the garden. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, fermenting these turnips. So this is my setup that I've got going here. And I decided to do this outdoors in the garden. I figured it would be a, um, a proper thing to do seeing that, you know, they, they came from here just show you really quickly we're in the winter now we're in a January and uh, we just went through a few days of extreme cold and freezing and everything just kind of like died <laughs> some turnips are still in the ground and um, you could see the greens they're probably gonna come back in the middle but uh, I'm leaving them there, see what's going to go on. I don't harvest everything. I like to leave things there to go to seed or just just to leave them there. <laughs> okay, so here's my setup. Oh, uh, yeah, I put those glasses on this turnip so you could see the size, <laughs> you know. It's big like a head, right? That's the point here, the glasses. And it's just like a little uh, wink, wink to the uh, one of the person who commented on my uh, YouTube channel saying that the uh, vegetables that I'm growing in the garden seem to be sick and uh, they're not doing well. Well, I don't use any fertilizers and um, not all the turnips are that size, but they were they were pretty vigorous and and uh, full of life life force. And I also and I don't want to go talk too much about this, um, but um, I would ask, what is health? You know, what is health? What does it mean to be healthy? And I think um, a lot of us have a very uh, poor understanding of health. We have a very um, um, mi misinformed. Uh, we are misinformed on what disease is and health and uh, anyways the plant world also we don't know what it means I'm gonna do a video on this uh, later I promise I make a video on sacred agriculture which all uh, which has to do with health healing consciousness and so on so yeah fermentation um, I'm not gonna go into all the details of why it's good to eat lacto fermented wild uh, fermentation uh, ferments but um, I just want to point out here that if you go to the store to buy some be careful um, the corporations have caught on the health craze and they're making sauerkraut pickles and all sorts of things and they call it um, fermented foods oh, they're caught they'll, they'll say like these are the um, sauerkraut you know or things like that but they're not really it's not real sauerkraut they put vinegar and uh, fermentation is lactic acid so now turnips that's an interesting one right I suspect that most of you have never actually had fermented turnips or have thought about it uh, of fermenting them but I did this here last year and oh they're great and um, just a quick story here on how I got to fermenting them is oh I would say 20 years ago I um, I discovered this Mediterranean uh, restaurant in Montreal City Canada and I think it was a Lebanese restaurant and I ordered this like um, sandwich called a falafel and it's a uh, chickpea based patties and um, and in the sandwich there was this 
they put this kind of like this here this like french fry and they were they had a purple hue purple tint but they were whitish purplish kind of like stained and they were kind of vinegary and I had two little pieces in my sandwich and I was like these are just so good so I went and asked what are these and they said turnips and I was like but they're they're not the color of turnips they said no they're uh, turnips in beet juice and I was like huh okay now uh, fast forward 20 years or even more forward where I'm actually growing some turnips and I and, and I'm I'm all into like wild fermentation for preservation and health reasons and I was thinking well let me try it and and I did last year and they were really good but this year I, I was like oh I remember those the beets there that beet stain and it just so happens that I grew beets um, in what was it this year well I mean we're 2017 that was 2016 uh, in the spring I uh, planted beets and then I harvested and I fermented them and I kept the uh, the fer the ferment juice the beet ferment juice okay and the reason I kept it was so that when I make my 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 turnips, I could stain them now. Okay. Now, if you've never had these, oh, <laughs> this is like so good. And it's such a shame because you're probably watching this thinking, hey, how can a? Oh, look at that. There's a bee. Hey, Miss. What, Mr. Bee? What are you looking for, huh? This is winter now. <laughs> um. Yeah, you, see, you probably won't find this in uh, in your store, in your grocery stores, um, but you can find them in some Mediterranean food uh, restaurants if you're lucky. Because I haven't found, besides for in that Montreal city where I found some in the Lebanese restaurant, I haven't seen them elsewhere. So now I'm making them. Here's what I got going. Basically. Like all fermented foods, um, you have to use well water, or at least you uh, have to have water that that's not uh, chlorinated or has uh, antibacterials in it. So municipal water's out because they um, municipal water by by its very nature uh, has been treated to kill bacteria, right? And this, this, what we're doing is the inverse. We want to uh, favor the growth of bacteria. We want a lot of bacteria, okay? But we only want the good kind of bacteria or whatever, like, it means good. In this case is the uh, lacto-fermenting bacterias, which that means the bacteria that um, produce lactic acid. So they, they digest um, starch, for example, and convert it into lactic acid. The lactic acid is um, that's produced once the fermentation has begun is what preserves the um, vegetables because the lactic acid is um, the lactic acid only the bacteria that produce lactic acid could actually survive in that. The, the, the other ones that could possibly be harmful, they die. They're killed by the lactic acid. So you've got like millions of bacteria there in here that are actually good for you, uh, for your uh, gut bacteria. They're good, they're probiotics. This is like, this is, like the, this is gonna feed whatever's the, living in your uh, gut microbiome. You have to learn about that, okay? If you seek health, you have to learn about your gut, okay? They say gut bacteria, the microbiome, and um, this is what the whole probiotics is about, what they put in you, the yogurt there. Uh, which is um, not necessarily uh, probably produced in a pharmacy farm in a pharmaceutical by the pharmaceutical industry and you have to be careful I saw on the internet 
there's this uh, MIT startup f uh, financed by um, Big Pharma and Bill Gates and all those eugenists, eugenicists. They um, are now producing genetically modified gut bacteria. Okay, those probiotics are genetically modified and they've got genes in the DNA of those bacteria that they're, they're going to be putting this in pills or I don't know, maybe they might even be putting it in your yogurt. Um, and then uh, what, they're, what they want is for people to be ingesting the probiotics. Okay, they're going to say, hey, probiotics, everybody knows it's good for you. Uh, the doctor is going to prescribe these probiotics for you. And you're going to have a little tablet. You're going to swallow it because everybody wants a pill. And then they, you're supposed to heal whatever uh, metabolic uh, problem you have through the gut bacteria, which this genetic modified gut bacteria will be producing all sorts of enzymes proteins and whatnot inside your gut stay away from that this is what you need to be doing or sauerkraut okay or pickles but um, yeah I'm, I'm rambling but I think it's important that this information uh, comes out yeah, so turnips, they're so easy to grow, okay? Uh, I, did, I did pickles, uh, cucumbers, and they're, they're, they're not hard to grow, but they they're, uh, takes a lot of time to go out there every morning and try to get them very small because they grow fast. This here, you just let them grow. You do nothing except love them. You go visit them and you love them, you know, and then they're, then they're ready. And you harvest them, clean them, and then that's it. Okay, so it's like eh, much less work and you could get a lot more done so as usual what I do is I prepare myself a, um, a, a, a jar here and I put uh, some salt in some uh, well water the salt also has to be a, a, the kind of salt that it doesn't have antibacterial uh, antibacterial so no iodine okay get yourself like uh, don't get the kosher salts or and some of them don't have uh, yeah just look for look for no iodine or just the real salt Himalayan salt okay that's the best salt you could get is uh, it's real it's real salt see they say real salt because there's fake salt and um, fake salt is what Morton you know that blue box with the uh, the little girl with the um, umbrella don't don't buy that Morton. Hey, this is a publicity against Morton. Morton, shame on you <laughs> for producing poison. Hey, um, look it up, people, what Morton is about. It's a, um, it's linked to the military industry uh, producing uh, jet engine fuel and um, minerals, uh, taking minerals out, out of uh, what what is real salt. So, you got your water, and I prepare it, this is called a brine, okay, water and salt is called a brine. I put four tablespoons of salt in this here, which is like uh, four pints if you fill it up to the top, okay, and I don't, you could put, some people put more salt, some people put less. It depends on your taste. You like it salty or not. I put, a, four is not a lot. Um, but the reason I don't worry too much about it is because I in, I'm inoculating my um, my brine my my um, jar with the beet juice. When the, this is not just beet juice, this is the result of fermentation of wild fermentation. So in here is a lot, okay, of lactic acid producing bacteria. Okay, so I'm inoculating. And if, if you remember what I said, the salt, uh, I said that in my other video on pickle, fermenting pickles, the salt is only necessary to, um, to prevent the bad type of bacteria of starting to proliferate at the beginning of the process. And then, uh, because at one point, you will have enough lactic, ba lactic acid bacteria to preserve and to kill the the bad ones but at the beginning you don't have lactic acid bacteria so the salt plays the role of 
uh, killing or maintaining the population of bacteria uh, at, a, at a lower density. And um, the lactic acid bacteria, they don't mind the salt so much, okay? Uh, so much information. Uh, these are this is like the pickle, the the pickle juice from my my fermented pickles. I'm all, I have that too. In case I don't have enough beet juice, I'm going to um, use that to inoculate. Now you don't have to inoculate. I'm doing it just so I could put less salt because I'm not. I don't necessarily want these to be too salty. And then um, you could try not putting any salt and you might get away with it. It might work and or they might go bad. Okay, so um, Yeah, what um, This so yep, this is my setup. I think that's pretty covers pretty much everything that I have to say just make sure um, When you're done you um, don't put the lid on too tight let make sure that there's wiggle room so that the um, the gases produced by the fermentation could come out. Put your thing in a jar because it might overflow and bubble and lactic acid and this uh, is very, it's kind of like, uh, it's corrosive to like marble. If you have a mar like countertops of marble, <laughs> you probably like your countertops. You don't want them to like, you know, change colors or, <laughs> and this uh, beet juice is very staining. So yeah, that's one thing. How long do I leave them? Well, to taste, really, like, um, until they taste how I want them to taste, basically. And, and um, I like them when they're, they really, like, have this very sharp, acidic taste. I like lactic acid a lot. <laughs> so I let them maybe at least three weeks. I will, you know, <laughs> depending on the temperature, it's... Uh, room temperature right now is quite low we're in the winter so it might be a month and a half you know uh, if this was summer and it was like a hundred degrees outside it might just be five days um, having said that here's something uh, that you need to know there's a succession of bacteria okay that hap that happens in here first there's a certain species um, there's a certain type of bacteria. Once they are done converting what the, whatever their food source is, and if it's the starch, the certain type of you know chemical, once they're done doing that, there's another uh, type of bacteria that take over, and then they start to grow. And then there's a third generation, like a third type that start. There's a succession. That's what's called a succession. Okay, you have that also in the forest. You have succession. You have like the uh, ruderals, uh, the the species, the pioneer species, and then you have the late climax species. Um, so now, some people swear that if if you ferment at a lower temperature and let more time, you will get to the final climax, clima climatic, climaxic, uh, I don't know how to say it, the, the late successional species, and that actually brings a, a more refined taste to your, ferment, to your ferments, okay? Like sauerkraut, it's, um, how, could I, how could I say this? It's like making wine, okay? You could make a cheap wine real quick, uh, really fast. Or you could age your wine with all sorts of techniques and, th and that will taste much better and it will cost a fortune and it's like exquisite, you see? It's the same with this. You could like, this is very fascinating, you know, lacto-fermentation, wild fermentation. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get into it, I mean, you know, you like if you get the taste for this, you can't stop, and you just want them to get better and better and better, and it's also very good for you. And oh yeah, and what would I do, you know, with all these turnips if not if I didn't ferment them? You know, I could freeze them, but huh, they wouldn't be uh, as tasty or as healthy now. And I can't eat all these turnips. You know, I give some away to my friends, but. You know, so much turnips a guy could eat. All right, so that's 19 minutes 53. That's all I had to say. 
Okay, people, if you have any questions, just put a comment in the video uh, and I'll answer. Take care. Love those turnips.